Today's podcast is about economic outlook of U.S. and global economy by a well-known YouTuber, Gregory Manorino, financial strategist and technical analyst. He is also known as the Robin Hood of Wall Street. He is the active, full-time trader of the capital markets with a worldwide following. Listen to the full podcast to prepare for the massive global debt bubble, and are we witnessing a serious bubble burst? Please follow us on YouTube and open your notifications for further podcasts. Enjoy. I'm happy you you mentioned the yield curve, the inversion between the 10-year and the 2-year rate reached its highest point since 2000. Some would say this is a clear sign that we're on the brink of a recession, but would you argue we've already begun the recession? (laughs) I would I would argue that we're way way worse off than a recession here right now. Oh, the, the the economic news that they're telling us is is clear on that. The fact that people are suffering and they continue to suffer moving forward here, um, you know, and they continue to borrow beyond their eyeballs, you know, dancing their way into destitution is what I've been saying recently here. They're enjoying their last hurrah. Um, and until they go down into that lower rung of society and become slaves to the system, that's what it is. Yeah, sure. Your curve is inverted. It's, it's, it's extremely inverted at this point here, but that doesn't tell me, or I don't think anyone that follows my work or, or who understands what's happening, anything. We realize that the economy globally is over. It's in free fall. It's not going to stop. Um, and every mechanism you can dream about and things you can't even think about yet, are going to be thrown at people in this new economic model. The new economic model is going from crisis to crisis to crisis so they can pull more cash out of the future, whether it means, you know, uh, allowing central banks to continue to buy all the debt for which they can do anything they want. They have no oversight here. Um, you know, whatever it might be, another disease process or another variant, they got to throw cash at that. Expanding wars, they got to throw cash at that. Now we have this, uh, this bill that's going through the Senate to subsidize um, you know, the semiconductor industry here, which is essentially a backdoor bailout. I think people should understand that as well. Uh, and every other mechanism possible to continue to pull cash from the future. What people don't know, what the biggest secret is, it's in everyone's face, is that that's the system. It demands that debt be fueled, added to the current situation in, in, uh, exponentially in order to function. Without doing that, it's over. Um, the system demands that debt be created every day by every mechanism possible, henceforth crisis to crisis to crisis and everything else they can come up with. Does the new monetary system you speak of include a digital dollar? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's that's the ultimate thing. What they're going to do eventually is go to a completely digital system where every single transaction is going to be tracked down to the 10,000th uh, of, of, of a cent here. So look, the new system... It's very simple to understand. You can see it unfolding now. They're going to go after people's freedoms and liberties more so. They're going to exert a lot more control on people. And I think their end game here is to, uh, uh, this may sound extreme, but uh, to reduce the, uh, the, the population of the world by, by, um, by a large margin here. To again, ex- this, what, go ahead. Sorry, when you say day though, are you speaking like central banks? Central banks, yeah. Uh, they the is the government. The gov- we have a one world government today. They is central banks. They control it all. They control the monetary system. They run the economy. They run it all. The the puppets that they put there as uh, you know uh, figureheads. Okay, they they just they just there uh, as for something to people to look look towards because they believe that that is they are people that are actually pulling the strings, but it has it has no bearing on reality well, whatsoever. Central banks have unified, right. none more so than the Fed and the European Central Bank, and they're running the entire world economy. They're running it into the ground by design. And to that point, if we just even just look at the evolution of Jerome Powell, right? He came in as Jerome the Hawk. Then he kind of transformed into Jerome the Dove. Then it was Jerome the Steroid Pusher. Then it was just Jay, Oof. right? So it's like, well, who is he really, right? And, and to your point, is it just you know pushing whatever narrative and agenda has to be pushed at that moment? Yeah, and it's not going to stop. I mean, look, what people need to understand, I really at its core, the system number one, as I said, is debt based. It's a debt based economic model. It must be fueled with more debt. It can't ever stop. Once we stop the moment, see, we could end the system. We could, you see, we could, you see my hat back here in the Fed? We could end the Federal Reserve and every central bank 
in a nanosecond. If, if we just prevented them from issuing one single dollar of more, more debt, just one dollar, the entire system would implode. Um, that's why they got to come up with reasons to continue to pull cash from the future and sell it to the public. I mean, we just heard from the World Bank. World Bank is saying that developed nations around the world must support impoverished nations or the global poverty issue is going to get worse. Well, I have a little clue for everyone is listening to the global global poverty issue is designed to get worse, much, much worse. And no amount of cash conjured up out of thin air being created by a central bank is going to fix the problem. The underlying issue is the debt-based economic model, and they will never let it go. Central banks have established the debt-based economic model to exert power. They have one product, central banks, and that is their ability to issue and manipulate debt. That's it. That's their only tool. You hear about Jerome Powell, for example, talking about tools in his toolbox. They have one tool. It's how they can manipulate the debt, and that's it. So this is, that's another lie that's being, oh, the Fed has tools. Oh, they're going to help everyone. The Federal Reserve and other central banks right now are on a mission to uh, fulfill their final solution. Their final solution, if, and that should sound familiar to people, that term here I'm using, uh, is again to exert maximum control on the population of the world. Um, and this does involve a new system of maximum control, um, a dig completely digital system. And at that point, again, look, they're not done. They won't be done with their what they're doing now until they've managed to put whoever's left, members of the middle class, um, in such a way that they're going to be forced into that lower rung of society and be forced to be a slave to the system here. This three-tier society that we have here, you know, including a middle class, this is a new thing. It's only a couple of centuries old here. And um, it's going away. Uh, I've been explaining to people that we are going back into a feudal system, a two-tier society that's part of the big plan. And that is, uh, again, extreme control. And unfortunately, people are being lulled into this. And um, I think willingly, in, in, in a lot of ways, people can't make it anymore. Uh, they can't survive, so they become slaves to the systems, which is the end game, which is the goal, um, the final solution to create slaves, to create a, a, a world of slaves. Okay, well, that said, <clears throat> and you've definitely laid out the landscape for us loud and clear, you see the global economy in free fall. I want to know Gregory Manorino's game plan right now, what you're buying, how you protect yourself, how you not become dependent on the system. Mm -hmm. So let's start with, you know, you said you're buying uh, stocks right now, correct? Uh, I'm buying one one asset right now. I'll, you want me to cover that? I'm buying a, uh, an exchange yes. traded fund, ticker JEPI. Um, this is, uh, it pays a monthly dividend over 9%. Uh, and that's that's pretty substantial. And you, you, you get paid monthly on it here. I think it's a nice place to put cash right now in an environment where it's kind of difficult to figure out what's going on. But the, but the bigger picture is not is, is really looking at the end game. What do we know is going on? It's very simple. We have swelling global debt. It's, it's ballooning and it will continue to balloon in, until we get a bursting of that debt bubble, the debt market hyper bubble, which is being fueled by design. The larger they can make the global debt bubble, the bigger the bang when it eventually bursts. And we, we witnessed it. We witnessed some of it when we had that uncontrolled sell-off in that 10-year yield. And then, of course, central banks got in here and started managing the yield curve more so than they were already here. And they're going to continue to do that. But it's, it doesn't come without a cost. The cost here is more inflation, quite obviously. So what people need to do, if look, not everyone has the ability or maybe even should be in an, an exchange-traded fund or in, in the stock market. What people need to do, in my view, is realize that we're in this environment of swelling debt here and just take the opposite side of that trade. That is being real things. I've been explaining to people for since I started uh, well over a decade ago to hold hard assets, physical silver, my favorite asset of all time, physical gold here, because eventually how I see this playing out, it should make sense to people. Let's, let's put this together real quick. If, if just to clarify. Eventually, we're going to get a meltdown in the debt market. And this is not going to be by accident. It's being fueled by design. What I mean by a meltdown in the debt market is an uncontrolled spike in bond yields. 
Okay. And what that's going to do is exert pressure on the stock market, the complete opposite of what we've been witnessing since the meltdown of 2008. So if you get an uncontrolled sell-off in the debt market, you'll see yields spike very rapidly like we witnessed with the 10-year yield, 60 basis points in like two days. Okay. Um, and what's going to happen is that'll put pressure on the stock market and cash is just going to move into other assets. It doesn't go to money heaven. Cash moves from one set of assets into another set of assets. And in my opinion, gauging from this scenario, it should be pretty easy to understand. A sell-off in the debt market will precede a sell-off in the stock market. You have to understand too, the debt market is the driver of everything, even the stock market. The stock market itself is a derivative as to what's going on here. As everything prices off of what's happening in the debt market, which is the largest aspect of the market altogether, okay? So by understanding that, we can, we can pretty much understand where other assets are going to go when we get that implosion in the debt market. Stocks will sell off, and cash is just going to move into, I believe, into commodities. And I think the most suppressed asset in the history of the world 